Hello everybody, Kirk Miller here from AEM EV with a Pinsgauer update. And uh, I know it's been a while, we've been getting ping from you saying, hey, you know, when's the next update? Where are you guys at? But before we go into it, I wanna talk about some of the reasons, not the excuses why we've been delayed. We've had a lot going on here, both on the engineering side and with the sales and marketing team on several different upgrades, on several different upgrades that we've done over the past few, holy shit. I apologize for the background noise, but this is an active shop. What's been going on besides Miss Pins and all the work that has been accomplished? You might be familiar with the Napoleon EL1 EV drag car. It's a Camaro that was converted into an EV drag car using a Tesla LDU. Uh, that car came to us with some other controls on it and some challenges. We have since completely updated the car. We pulled out the performance drive LDU, put in a base drive LDU, the whole suite of AEM EV electronics, our Tesla drive board, our VCU 200, our dash, our keypad, several PDUs, and the car now performs flawlessly. Uh, just needs a little more battery. That'll make it a little bit more fun. But that was done by sales and marketing team and Sam Sheshevang, who you've seen several times over, referred to as laptop, had done a majority of the work. He actually ran lead on that with the tech team. Super cool, super fun build, and uh, really proud of what we've accomplished there. In addition to that, you may have seen uh, our Testang, our Mustang. There's a really cool video coming out where the engineers walk through the build, the conversion, dyno testing, some track time, including drag racing with some known professional drivers and some novices, and guess what? <laughs> kind of funny. In addition to that, this might not be breaking news at this point, but Ford announced an E-Crate motor at the SEMA show. It's called the Illuminator. So it's a really nice, dense 210 kilowatt motor package. One of the challenges is that there's no way to control it. So there's no inverter and no controls, no VCU. The engineering team who went to work uh, with Ford to get this motor up and running prior to the SEMA show, they stole the inverter off of our IM225 from the Pinsgauer. They got it on the dyno, they got it spinning, making power. So they're making, I believe, uh, 400 newton meters of torque, which is what Ford had claimed uh, on a 400 volt battery pack. So a lot's going on. That's a, sort of a summary of what's going on in the shop. But now I want to get to the pins. Last we left off, we had some devices hung around. Now we've got bracketries and such sorted. Uh, I want to step over to one of the belly pans that has the inverter and the DC to DC and onboard charger. So I talked about wanting to have the sort of cool old look. We still got that, but on the inside, she's clean. We have a nice poly base. This is our DC to DC and onboard charger. This bracket is where the stolen IM225 inverter once sat but it'll be back once engineering's done with that. So this is the, this is the package for that. So you, you, you can't tell what's in here until you, until you show it off. Next, battery packs. We talked about using the Model 3 battery packs and how we're gonna slice them and stack them. We've accomplished that. You've seen it with trays in and out. The trays are now mounted with all the stacker plates and we have some insulator, insulating panels that'll go actually between the two packs. So if you look down the side, kind of hard to see here, if I lift up, Slightly, you can see that. We really wanted to capitalize on using the structural integrity that Tesla's engineered into these battery packs. And then, yeah, we did lose the seating. We have a nice flatbed setup. There'll be another panel over this. Battery packs, hardware's done. Next is we load the sticks in, load in the cooling lines, and start putting high voltage to this. So we're, we're making good progress here. We're gonna move on, but before we do, you notice up in the front, there's a swirl can sitting. That's the swirl can for the cooling system. We have a single loop cooling system that's gonna handle cooling for the inverter and onboard charger and DC to DC, in addition to the battery pack. That's the highest point of the cooling system. That's where it's gonna deaerate, swirl, and then feed back down into our pump system, which I'm gonna show you now. So I'm gonna close it up and bring her up. Some of the brackets you've seen already, um, but I want to just touch on some of the things that we've added in. Um, one, you'll notice that this is a can-controlled water pump that we've added. Brackets are using the factory trans bracket, so that's kind of cool right off the torque tube. I love stuff like that. The oil cooler that sat on the IM225 originally was this little small water-to-oil oil cooler. That made it really challenging because we wanted the motor as close to the torque tube as possible, so we removed that. We came up with a little adapter plate and we're gonna run AN lines to the cooler that's sitting on this side in this bitchin' roll cage that we've added. Um, this motor does hang off the side of the torque tube and we keep on saying safety, safety, safety. Um, we've added this whole roll cage. It ties into the factory mounts, ties into the skid plate, and then the, the, the skid plate itself will tie back into the torque tube. So if we do get 
you know, whether it be rocks or debris or whether someone, you know, comes in contact with the vehicle, this is going to do a really good job of protecting our friend, the IM225. In addition to that, you can see throughout all the spaces, we talked about, you know, some of the components of this being a project vehicle and, and doing the body lift. We now have all our billet spacers in place. Not a real big thing, but just something worth mentioning. That's pretty much it for right here. A lot of work's gone in. We're getting ready to pull all these metal parts off and we'll get them out to powder coat so they look and stay clean and rust free. In this area, you, you may have seen in some of the other videos, this is really cool old fuel jug, a jerry can, like an OG jerry can. We pulled that and decided that that would be an excellent location for our radiator. Again, the radiator doesn't have to be that big because of the high efficiency of the battery pack and the motor. You're not throwing off a whole lot of heat. And again, this isn't a high performance vehicle. It, it's an EV. So we're not going to be taxing the cooling system. So we're able to get away with a fairly small radiator system uh, with a couple of fans on it right in the location where the jerry can sat. Look over your shoulder. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we are today. Next steps is we actually start lacing in the 12 volt and high voltage and actually fitting up all the devices once these components come back from powder coat. So the next step you'll see, hopefully it's gonna be us pushing a button and you hearing click, click, and then all of us smiling and then us going for a ride. One thing before I go, I hope you noticed my t-shirt, Lost is pointed out. These are new t-shirts for AEMEV. They're available on our website. If you're interested, Get one so you can represent. Would appreciate the representation out there. We need it. EV crew, right? <laughs> uh, if you liked what you saw, please hit the like. If you want to be notified when the next video drops, hit the notifications. And please feel free sharing with your friends because uh, we think it's a bitch and build, and I hope you do as well. So until next time, Kirk out, and see you soon.